Okay. And then I see they've given you more calculations looking at total gross wages and net wages. Um, and then you've got the accounting. Right, debit, credit, uh, that's on page 88. Yeah. All right, so, okay, this we, could, this we can look at um, on page, the recovery rate, but I'll discuss that with you just now. Um, let's just put some notes here. Okay, when focusing on labor, you need to reimburse or pay employees in terms of remuneration, remunerate the employees, considering the work that they do. Okay, and normally you'll have information relating to the hours that they've worked. Right, yeah. because I see later on they use that as a basis. Okay, per labor hour and that type of thing. Labor hours, yeah. I've seen, yeah, I've seen that. Okay. All right, so just a note here about this particular chapter. Um, if you look at page 83, here they're just looking at accounting. Okay, so they literally take information and they draw up the inverted commas pay slip. Right, so if you look at that example, you'll see they start with the wages. Normal way, yeah. Normal and then they less all the deductions. Yeah, overtime. Okay, yes. well, overtime is still part of their wages. So remember, wages is the normal wages, and overtime. Then overtime, that's plus, yeah, and then, the, yeah, then, you, then all the lessons. Yeah, okay. okay, then you subtract all the stuff that they contribute. So if they contribute to a pension fund, you subtract. If they contribute to pay as you earn, UIF, medical, all of that stuff, you subtract. Okay, yeah. okay and then you get the net. So the gross is what you start with. Yeah, gross, and then net is like with all the deductions. Net yeah, is what net is after the deductions. Yeah. Right, so the net is actually what's paid to the employee. Does that make sense? Yes, yes. Okay, so that's the only yes. bit that I actually want to focus on in detail, unless you want me to, co to cover it in more detail. No, no, that's fine. I'm, I can go, I can do this. Yeah, I don't think it's a very difficult section. Um, only yeah. when looking at this, um, I want to look at the second part of this study unit, which is looking at that uh, that labor allocation rate thing. Okay. Okay, that yeah. I think you might struggle with a little bit. Okay, okay. but uh, this I think you'll be okay with. Um, I mean, we've discussed what the difference is between gross and net. Yes. Okay, and deductions. That's... Maybe just to add more detail here, pension, medical. UIF. Retirement, UIF, yeah. pay as you earn, etc. Yes. Okay. Right, if you want me to go through this in more detail, we can do it maybe next week. Um, yes. We can go through it in more detail, but I think for this section, I think you'll be okay. I want yes. to look at that uh, second part of the, 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 um, the study units. Okay. okay, so this I think you might not know, but we will see and let's see what you what you do. Um, something else that they also look at here, page, I see they give you quite a bit of accounting in, in this textbook, page mm. 88, debit yeah. and credits for the, rec uh, for the record keeping. Record, yes. Record, yes. Okay, this is the recording of transactions in the journal, the general journal. Right, but again, that's more accounting than management accounting. That's more financial accounting. Yes, okay. Okay, so again, if you need me to discuss that in detail, um, have a look at it. I think you'll be okay. I mean, you mentioned you're doing FAC as well concurrently. Um, yes. So I do think you'll probably be able to make sense of the debits and credits. If you don't, then let me know. I can discuss it with you in detail next week. 100%. I will, okay. I will make notes. I will definitely make yeah, notes. Yeah, remember next week, um, try to get a list of things that you want me to come to cover in more detail, uh, things that you might be struggling with. Yeah, so okay. I'll try to go over it. I mean, even if we go over it and I know it, just like of stuff that I, I did learn over yes. the week, what, then it, it can be like a quick, it could be um, nice and, and smooth. Correct, yeah. Okay. All right, and then the last part of this study unit is looking at what I said that you might struggle with slightly. This is new. This I haven't seen um, in financial accounting. Okay, it only comes up in management accounting. They talk about a labor recovery rate. <coughs> okay, 
Okay, this is management accounting because remember, it comes back to what we said previously. Yes. Um, cost yes. allocation. Cost, yes, cost. So when I'm looking at different jobs or different activities or different products, okay, all of those products are going to require labor, right? I mean, people, you need people to operate, don't you? Yes, of course. Okay, so people need to be employed and they need to be helping us with production. That's their role. Okay, that's the role that labor plays within the organization. Okay, they're there to do the work, okay? So when you look at the labor recovery rates, right, you'll see when looking at some of these examples, they talk about budgeted um, labor, they talk about idle time, they talk about productive work hours. Okay, so do you agree when looking at labor, are the workers going to be working all the time? No. No, they're not. Okay, so you might have budgeted time for work, but the actual could be different from what was budgeted. Okay, maybe because of inefficiencies in terms of production, uh, it could be maybe staff that are a bit more uh, maybe lazy or demotivated or, or, or something along those lines. Okay, but that's more like the operational, the HR side of things. Okay, all we're going to be looking at here in terms of financial, or well, management accounting actually, okay, in terms of financial management, is when looking at the budgeted labor recovery rate. The rate is key. Let's make that word big. Okay, the word rate means it's going to be per something, per hour, per per unit, per something. Okay, so earlier on I, I mentioned how important it is to have a base. Okay, because you need a base to allocate cost to different things. Remember that? Yes, yes. Okay, so here in your textbook they've given you a formula. Budgeted labor recovery rate is equal to, okay, numerator over denominator. Let's write the numerator first. Total budgeted annual labor cost. Okay, this is the total budgeted labor cost. So this is what we expect. It's not what actually takes place. It's what we're budgeting for. All right, then you're dividing that by, uh, maybe let's use the right divide sign. Where's the divide here? Okay, let's just put that rather than just underline it. Okay. Divide by, and then in the in the denominator you've got the total. But notice it's the hours. Yeah. Yes. Total budgeted annual productive hours. And productive is the key word. Right. right. Because we're looking at when they're actually productive, meaning when they're actually doing work, not while they're taking a break or on yeah. lunch. Does that make sense? Yeah, yes. Okay, so when when companies look at productivity, right, they're only going to be looking at the productive hours. Okay, so if you're working eight hours a week, uh, not eight hours a week, eight hours a day, okay, times five days a week, which is 40 hours a week. Okay, that's the normal average working hours of an individual, okay, who's employed at a company. Right, so if we look at those eight hours, okay, we're not going to take into consideration their lunch break. Because the lunch break is not seen as productive. Yes. Okay, that's law. Okay, so if, you're, if, you, if you've employed an, a, um, an employee, okay, so someone is working for you, okay, maybe there's an admin person doing some admin in the office, right, that person will be paid according to their hours, their total hours. Right, so you have to also provide for uh, a lunch break um, for yes. that employee by law, um, and that's not what we're looking at here. Okay, what we're looking at here is the productive hours. So how many hours are they actually supposed to be working for, and during that time, how much do we actually end up paying them? That's going to give us a recovery rate. So then we can then allocate those costs to specific items based on the recovery. Does that make sense? Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. 
Right, so is there an example? Uh, let's see. Let's see if we can find one. Okay, there is one here. Um, activity 5.5. .5. Can right. you read that one for us? Yes, okay. Um, oh, the, the oh, so 5.5. .5, it's on page, yeah. page 91. Okay, so a junior engineer in a chemical company earns 80 Rand per hour. Um, the company operates a five-day, 40-hour week. Each worker is entitled to 15 working days annual leave and a holiday bonus equal to two weeks normal pay. There are 12 paid public holidays annually. Idle time allowed is equal to 5% of available clock time. The company contributes 16% of normal wage, including vacation pay to the pension fund and 13,312 rand to the medical aid fund. Apply a 52-week year. Okay, good. So when you read a question like this, you need to relate everything to the question that we've got here in terms of budgeted labor costs. Okay, so is it a cost, question mark, or is it the basis? And when I mean basis, looking at the hours. Okay, that's, that's the approach that I would take when looking at a question like this. Okay, because you've got two things to consider. Obviously, how much you pay the employee, and then the second thing is how many hours they work. Do you agree? Yes, yes. Okay, keep these things separate, and then you can combine them later if you want to. Okay. Okay, so what is the first amount that you read in the question? So, yes, yeah, so the engine, the company earns 80 Rand per hour. Is that so a cost or is that a basis? So that's a cost. Correct. What else? Okay, um, operates a five-day, a five-day, 40-hour week. Is that a cost or a basis? That's the basis. Good. So it's five days times 40 hours per week. Make sense? Yes, yes. Okay. Oh, uh, it's actually the other way around. So no, it's, it's five I, yeah, days, I, uh, which uh, is 40 hours. Yes. Okay, that's better. So 40, yeah. So it's just 40 hours per week. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, because they've given you five days and they've days given you 40 hours. Yes, that's eight hours a day. Eight hours per day, correct. You could also write that down if you want to. Keep going. Okay. Next thing. Yeah, so each worker is entitled to 15 working days annual leave. Is and that the cost or is that basis? So that, that's basis. No. Wait, well, oh, it's actually both. Oh because yeah, no, sorry, because it's pay, it's pay. Cost it's paid pay. leave, do you agree? It's pay, leave is, yeah, leave is a cost, sorry, because it's not, it is paid, paid leave, yeah. Yeah, so paid leave, how many days? 15. So, sorry, 15, yes. And that's equal to two weeks normal pay. Yeah, and that'll also be part of the hours, but part of the, um, the, it's the, the total the, hours. Yeah, so I think it's part of the 80 rand per hour. But that's the cost, yeah. We spoke yeah, about the cost, you're right. It's, it's, yeah. But if I look at the basis, it's the basis. part of the total. Yes, yes. Okay. Next thing. Okay. Um, sorry, there are 12 paid public holidays annually. No, no, no. The holiday bonus. Oh, sorry. The holiday bonus equal to two weeks normal pay. Yes. Holiday bonus. That's a cost. Do you agree? That's a cost, yes. Okay. That's and that's a, a cost equal to two weeks of normal pay. Yes. Okay, what else? Okay, so there are 12 paid public holidays annually. What is that? Cost or basis? 12 paid, so that's a cost. It's actually both. It's similar that's to what we said earlier with the paid. Yes, yes, it's part. It's part yeah, part. It's because, yeah. Okay, so public holidays. Okay, brackets. How many? 12. 12, correct. Okay, and this is also part of the total. Part of, yes, part of those items. Okay, next. And then, yeah, so idle time is allowed is equal to 5% of available clock time. Okay, so is that cost or basis? I would say basis. Basis, yes, because this is idle time. <clears throat> but do you also pay them for the idle time? Because remember, that's the lunch break. Y yes. Oh, uh, yes, because they pay, it is paid. Okay. It is paid, yeah. Okay, it's time that you allow them to be idle while at work. Yes. Okay, so idle time, part of the total. Part of the total, okay. Okay, next. Cool. And then, um, okay, the company contributes 16% of normal wage, normal wage, including vacation pay to the pension fund. 
Okay, this is additional, hey? Yeah. Okay, these are deductions. Pension Deduct fund. What else? And then three thirteen thousand three hundred and twelve to the medical aid fund. Correct, medical. Um, and then they say we've got a fifty-two work week. Uh, uh fifty-two week. Yeah. yeah. Do you agree? Yes. Okay. All right. So what do they want us to calculate? Where's the required? Okay, the required. The next page. Calculate the budgeted hourly recovery rate per work hour. Okay, so see, we've done everything. We've got everything that we need. We just yes. need to work out what the total costs are. And the total hours. Okay, that's something that you need to calculate from the information that they've given us. And then you need to compare that to the total hours. See, the basis. Yes. And that's how you would approach any question like this. Okay, group it. Okay, keep things together. Know what relates to the cost, okay, what the business has to pay, and then look at the basis of allocation. Okay, how many hours does the business actually have available? Make sense? Yes, yes.